Hi, my name is Paul Bregel. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, this is my first time here, so I'm really excited to learn from you as well and kind of, you know, learn more about the region and also how we could help. Um, so I'll start off very quickly with who I am. I myself am a three-time entrepreneur. I started my first company when I was 20 years old, uh, when I was in university. And um, I mean, the way I kind of see entrepreneurship, it's like I didn't know what I was doing at that time. I was a complete, you know, newbie. I just had no concept of what it was to take a company. But what I did is I just took the leap. It's like starting a company is you get, get off to a cliff and you jump off, and if you succeed, you've built an airplane, you kind of fly away. And if you fail, you fall flat on the floor and you die. Um, so I've run three companies. My first company, uh, the one I started out of college, did really quite well. Actually, it was a huge success. Uh, I worked with, it was a company that did video games. It was called Paragon 5. And uh, we had clients like Capcom, Sega, Atari, Nintendo. You pretty much name anybody in the game industry. We worked with them and we produced about 40 titles in five years. Um, so I sold that company in 2003. I started my next company uh, called Metro. So it was an early location-based service. Um, some of you guys might know a company called Foursquare, or if not, then let's just take something like Twitter meets location. Um, we built this company, raised millions of dollars, and uh, it was a you know, kind of really big rocket ship. But this company, the one actually I'm the most famous for, is because I failed. We lost all the money, I burned through everything, and I was a big failure. And that was really quite depressing and really quite humbling as well, too. Um, but from that, as a good entrepreneur, uh, kind of always you know, kind of picks himself up, and I started my third company, and from the ashes of that company, I started a company called Lafora. And Lafora went on to be a big success, and we sold it last year. It was a platform to kind of help people build out online communities. Um, so I, I built these companies over the years, and I've been asked to speak at a lot of events like these, uh, both in the United States, but also all, all around the world. And people just always ask me, what makes Silicon Valley so special? Why is it so different than here in Qatar? Or why is it different than Argentina? Or why is it different than uh, Tanzania or something like that? And so the really big difference between Silicon Valley and the rest of the United States and even the rest of the world is that people are very open. Um, I don't know where this came from. Maybe it's all the hippie and the flower children in the 60s. But people really are open to the idea of sharing and go, getting their idea out there earlier and actually talking through problems versus kind of keeping everything inside and kind of, you know, being very protective of their idea. And this openness and this sharing is actually one of the reasons that Silicon Valley has been so great. And I had really a lot of great people around me over the years helping my company, not even asking for any money or any percentage. They just wanted to help out. And then, you know, they kind of felt a good vibe that if they help out, that maybe they'll get rewarded in the long run or maybe their brain will be challenged or whatever it is. Um, so about two years ago, myself and my three partners, um, who I'll name, uh, Ashra Naveen, he started a company called BitTorrent. Uh, Jim Young started a company called Hot or Not. And Aber Whitcomb started a company called MySpace. The four of us came together and we started a program called IO Venture. And what we really wanted to do is, one, invest into really young companies, kind of at the earliest of stages, two or three people hanging out in a garage or wherever they are, kind of working on a cool new idea. And with this, we also want to make sure we involve as much mentorship as possible. So once us four came together, then we also started asking all our friends. And we rounded up a group of 30 mentors. And these people come in uh, every couple of months and hang out the companies. And these include people that start companies like PayPal, YouTube, uh, TechCrunch, uh, Rackspace, you name it. And these are all the kind of big pioneers in Silicon Valley. So we do have the advantage that all these guys are in our backyard. Um, so what we've done is that we've gone out there, we've built this program, and we've been really, really focusing on kind of opening ourselves up and making ourselves very, very available to these uh, you know, young companies. And so a couple of things we've seen that are work, really working well is, one, uh, we do a thing called office hours. So we just go out there and kind of like a professor would you know, make himself available back in university days, we do the exact same thing. And the transformation you see is when uh, two, two young guys, they go there and they meet with the founder of YouTube you know, who's built one of the biggest companies in the world in terms of, you know, users. Um, and the, they could ask him anything, right? And so this kind of trend of just openness and being very available to each other is very important. Another trend we're seeing that really works well in Silicon Valley is actually when you put smart people in the same room and you kind of tell them that, hey, this is off the record, this is very casual, things start opening up. Uh, people kind of you know, go out there and start doing kind of peer-to-peer oh, -peer teaching each other, right? When you're not having these big walls between each other and you're always constantly protecting your idea, things start to happen way quicker. And people, that's why innovation kind of moving so quickly in our area. Um, another thing we're seeing as well too is that casual interactions are good in the beginning to kind of help build a relationship. So instead of going out there and being all very formal and pitching your idea immediately to a potential partner, we always say, who do you want to talk to a year or two from now? Start hanging out with those people, meet up with them casually over a coffee or a drink or whatever it is, 
and build the relationship. So then when you actually need to get to the point where you're going to build out the business, you actually have already you know, a warm feeling versus a complete cold intro. So these are things that I'm seeing that work really, really well in Silicon Valley. And um, I think that you know, there's a lot of potential to take those abroad. So being said abroad, in the last two, uh, year, we actually you know we built this program in San Francisco. We had over 1,000 companies apply. We've taken 11 of them. So only 1% hit ratio. We're like, that's just not enough impact. How can we go out there and get it to more people in more places around the world and kind of really help explode and kind of you know, blow open the concept of entrepreneurship, especially in kind of consumer internet gaming technology type of companies? Um, so like I said, about a year ago, we started doing this around the world. And we've traveled to places like uh, Brazil, Argentina, uh, I was just came from Slovenia, Tanzania, Kenya, uh, New Zealand. So we've been kind of going out there and spreading this model and kind of opening up the entrepreneurship scene to you know people all around the world. What we've seen internationally, and I'm kind of trying to learn what's going on here over the next couple of days as well too, is that it's a little bit different model. In the United States, people already are building the companies. People just need more to be accelerated and kind of improve the speed of their growth of their companies. What we've seen in the other countries is. One, it's about exposing people to entrepreneurship, kind of putting a face onto it. A lot of times people don't even realize that entrepreneurship is an option. Your parents or somebody says, hey, I have to go work at a big bank or a big company. I want to go out there and say, hey, entrepreneurship is a really an option for you. It's becoming cheaper and cheaper to start a company every single day. Uh, there's tons of blog posts about you know, what it takes to start a company. Open source is out there, so why not go out there and encourage people to do this? And so we've been working with various, you know, both the grassroots, which I think is very important. You want to get people on the lowest level working on this, to the government level. And actually, in most of these countries, we're meeting up with the presidents to talk to them, say, hey, this has got to be something in your you know, plan going forward. Because you know, two guys start a company, they go on to hire five to 10 to 15, and this creates wealth and growth and really prosperity in the country and helps diversify their resources. So those are two things we're seeing. The third thing we're seeing is also people don't tend to want to open up with their ideas. People are always saying, oh, what about my IP? What, I'm, you know, what if this person steals my idea? What I'm really trying to say is the idea doesn't necessarily matter. Everybody has ideas. How many times have you guys had an idea and then you see two weeks later somebody launched a product like that? The real key is all about the execution. So what we really try to stress when we're going to these other countries is go out there and build it. Just be quiet, sit down, and pump it out. And that's really, I think, very important to kind of get that attitude out to people. Um, so, I mean, those are kind of the three things I'm seeing internationally that we need to work on. And everybody here just needs to encourage these young guys and girls because they're the ones who are going to be building out their future jobs. And there's no reason why, you know, you can't have the Googles, Skypes being built right here. I mean, they, we have access to all the executive technology everywhere in the world now. It's just a matter of actually doing it and building it and going out there and kind of scaling it. Um, so, yeah, I look forward to kind of, you know, interacting with all you guys more over the next couple of days. And, I'd love to kind of, you know, see how we could help as well, too, and kind of bring in the IO mentorship model over here into the you know, Middle East and North Africa region. Thank you.